Hey everybody, it's Friday night and I'm still down here working on this waterfall. I have yet to get it satisfactorily waterproofed. So today I have thinned some of my silicon caulk. I've dyed it, I've made a green silicon rubber paint. And today we're going to go into some detail about how I do it. I'm actually going to show you how I make it, how I dye it, how I get it thinned out so that it's a nice paint consistency. And then we're going to go into how I actually apply it. So this is what you can see is my rubber silicon caulk. This is GE silicon number two, but as you can see, it's a very, very paintable consistency. This is about the consistency of the kind of oil paint you would get in a tube if you were going to be uh, doing like oil on canvas or painting with a palette or something. You'd have paint that's about this consistency. So real quick, let's hop on over to my little work area on the washing machine. I'll show you how I mixed up this batch and then we'll get right back in here and we will start applying it and I'll show you how I actually slop this on and what it looks like during the application process. Alright, first we're going to start with some silicone number two. And the reason I use silicone two is because it adheres better to non-glass surfaces. And since I'm putting this all over foam and other adherents and glues that I've applied to the waterfall area, I definitely want something that's going to adhere to a wider variety of surfaces. And that's why I use the silicon number two. I also use the silicon number two because the number one releases what effectively is vinegar into the air as it cures and it's really unpleasant to work with indoors. It's not dangerous necessarily to work with indoors, it's just unpleasant and therefore I tend to use the silicon number two. Uh, a lot of people say you can't use this in aquariums or around aquariums. Uh, you can. I've shot video about that. I'm not going to get into that again at the moment. Uh, but you can use silicon number two just fine. All you got to do is let it cure properly. So once we got the silicon together, we are going to use odorless mineral spirits. Now they make a green version of this that's supposed to be better for the environment, but from what I gathered, the green aspect comes from the way they produce it and the process of making it is better for the environment, not necessarily the end product. And it actually contains a lot more of the VOCs, the volatile organic uh, compounds, which is what makes it you know, odor free is reducing those compounds and this has almost none of them so the regular old clean strip odorless mineral spirits is what you're going to want to use if you're doing this indoors I've tried this with turpentine you know like the gum tar turpentine and while that works it's really really unpleasant to use that in the house and that actually is dangerous you've got to have everything all opened up and ventilated and everything else so I would still just go ahead and recommend using the odorless mineral spirits and I start with just a little bit and start working that in. You don't want to use a lot all at once. It just, I don't know, it just seems to be easier to start with a little bit of liquid. Once you start getting the silicon a little bit soft, then you can add a little bit more liquid. And then you can just keep adding a little bit of liquid at a time until you get it to consistency you want it. So I also usually do one small batch of the mineral spirits just to get the silicon started and get it soft and then I'll go ahead and color it and the coloring mixes in a lot easier once the silicon has started to soften up a little bit so you can see it's already starting to get a lot softer so now of course I got it all over my hands and my gloves are getting slippery Now we're going to put some yellow in. I'm shooting for sort of a blue green algae kind of look. Don't need a lot of blue and you don't need much red at all, if any. I just want to darken it up so a little drop of red ought to make it nice and dark for us. see it doesn't really want to mix in and you just got to keep folding it and mixing it and folding it and mixing it and gradually that color will become even throughout and once you've got your base color you can add a couple more drops of this or add a couple more drops of that if you want to make it lighter you can actually add more silicon to it and that'll you know reduce the the 
the darkness if you've made it you know way too intense you can add some more silicon to lighten it up I am not entirely satisfied with that color I don't know how well you can see that or not but it's coming out sort of a bright green I want it a little darker than that so we're gonna have one more drop of blue and I think we're probably gonna wind up adding another drop or two of the blue here in a minute but I want to add a little more mineral spirits here and remember this is mineral spirits not mineral oil mineral oil will not have the same effect as the mineral spirits you want something that's gonna be a solvent which is the mineral spirits dissolves the silicon see that's why I don't know if you saw that splashing out of there uh, that's why it's not always a good idea to use large quantities at a time it's easy to splash and get messy so I'm still going to add some more blue to that because that is still too green for me and I think we got to add a little drop of red in there too to darken it up Now I would recommend if you're not thinning it, you probably would still want to mix some food coloring in with it. And if you don't want food coloring and you just want it to be clear, you can do the same process using the mineral spirits, just don't use any of the food coloring and your silicone will dry clear for you. I do recommend, however, mixing it up with something if you're going to be applying this in any kind of thick layer it needs to be incorporated you gotta do this to it basically and the reason is is it actually uses water in the curing process so when you draw like a small bead of caulk the, the water vapor in the atmosphere is actually what's reacting with the caulk and that's why a very small bead of it will cure just being exposed to the air if you're laying it on thick the stuff underneath once the skin forms that never gets exposed to any uh, air and consequently never gets exposed to any water vapor so if you do this and fold it over a bunch of times you're actually incorporating air and water vapor and everything else in there it actually isn't a bad idea to put just a couple drops of water in it and really mix it around the same way you'd mix in the food coloring Still going to go with a little more blue. So in this case, it's the food coloring that's adding the water to the mix, and that's going to give me my ability for this to cure. So if I were to let this sit, this would cure into one whole entire piece of solid rubber. It wouldn't still be gooey in the middle. If you just shot this right out of the caulk gun and filled this, it would stay gooey in the bottom just the same way your caulk inside the caulk tube never fully cures it's because it never gets exposed to any moisture or oxygen so simply incorporating this around like this whether you're using food coloring or not is a good idea to make sure you get a good full cure so I'm gonna go ahead and call that good with the color and I think we're gonna actually thin that consistency just a little bit more actually you know what I'm gonna call that good right there I think that's a nice consistency you can see how it pours this will be brushable but it's still thick that it's going to stay where I want it I'll be able to glop it onto things and have clumps of it stay there all right now I do need to get some stuff up here done that's not really going to come out well on camera so this batch I'm going to focus on painting sort of across the front here and then this area in here and we're going to get to see a lot more of it uh, visible on camera so remember this is the consistency of what we made and in fact let me get the uh, my big powerful LED turned on here now you'll be able to see what I'm doing I'm not dainty about it, I just kind of glop big glops of it where I need it and then from there I can come back and sort of thin it out. So what I'm doing now is kind of a cross between
covering up a few spots that I can see, you probably can't, uh, not only because they're tiny little spots, but also because of the angle of the camera. But in addition to that, I'm adding one more layer of green color and texture over the front of this. And one of the reasons I've been having issues with not sealing all the areas, uh, if you can see the way I'm applying this, I'm not applying it like it's paint and I'm starting at the top and just working my way to the bottom and making sure everything gets covered. I'm taking this particular batch that's this particular color and I'm painting a little here and a little there and then the next batch I make that'll be a slightly different color I'll paint some here and some there uh, I've already got some dark orange colors mixed in with here and then you know depending on how thick I've made the green if you paint over top of the orange with the green um, I don't know how well it's coming out on the camera but you can see some of the orange is still in here visible there's some of the orange through here is visible uh, mostly here is where the orange is visible so I don't know how well that's coming out on camera but I'll give you an example of putting some green over the orange depending on how thick I want to put it you can still see the orange coming through just fine but it now has just a little bit more natural sort of algae coloration over top of it and I will just keep sort of doing this here and there and plugging away at it slowly but surely we will finally get this thing fully waterproofed now when I say fully waterproofed it's not leaking at the moment but one of the mistakes I made early on while doing this was I used a type of caulk that was meant to be paintable and that was before I had sort of thought about dyeing the silicon here, which is kind of a shame. I've done this before. Uh, I've never thinned it out and used it like paint, but I have dyed silicon and used it as a you know colored rubber before. So there's no reason I shouldn't have sort of thought about this right from the beginning, but I didn't. And long story short, was I used a type of sealant that is paintable, but unfortunately is not meant to be submerged. It's basically weatherproof, not necessarily waterproof. And so once that was on there and I came back and I started painting all this stuff over it, you know, you look like you've got full coverage, you look like everything's completely covered with the silicone and then you put water in it and the other sealant would actually turn white when it came in contact with water. And over time it would sort of begin to get kind of pruney like your skin that's been in the tub too long and it would get soft and I actually wound up being able to just like tear big holes in it uh, in a few places namely right here in the front um, and so I kinda had to start building up from scratch with this unacceptable sealant on there so every time I thought I've been finished and every time I filled this back up I run water through it and then I see white spots and everywhere where there's a white spot that means I didn't get this good silicon coverage it was that other um, you know less effective stuff that was still being exposed and so I've had to come back and reapply coats and so that's been my process I get it wet I wait for it to turn white and every time I see a white spot I dry it off I mark where the spots are and then I come back with another batch of this and I try to cover all those spots and I've been doing that for the last several days and I think we're finally there so I'm gonna get on with this I've got the rest of that tube that I want to finish tonight uh, I've already opened that tube, so rather than have it just go, you know, get the, the end all plugged up and cured on me, and I can't use it anymore, I may as well just go ahead and finish it off. So I'm going to go make another batch. We'll do a slightly different color. I'll come back, and I'll do a little bit more up in that area where, uh, again, I know you can't see, so there's no point in me doing that on camera. But I'm going to go ahead and get on with that. So I'm going to say thanks for watching. Make sure you subscribe. You don't want to miss anything. This thing will be up and running soon, I promise. I've really got to get this done before the end of the season. Um, the, the outside rivers and stuff is going to be freezing on me. And if I want to get any kind of native animals in here, like some more crayfish and stuff, I need to do that now. So make sure you're subscribed and you won't miss anything. Uh, I think I'm going to be calling this my garden tank still, so make sure you subscribe, you won't miss that. See you on the next one, thanks for watching.